afternoon. Thank you for all attending. I'm Terry G.M. Petroni. I'm the 2015 Chairman of the Sterling Heights Board of Directors. I'd like to recognize my other directors who are my backbone and my team, if they wouldn't mind standing and being recognized. Thank you. Um, we have shared some notes with our speakers today. For those who are returning, they kind of know the ground rules for our new members. Uh, we will give each of them the same questions, and they'll each have three minutes to answer. And where's Patty with the timer? She's going to gavel them down if they, uh, <laughs> if they exceed their time. So they'll all have the same opportunity at the same questions. And um, when, when I give you your first question, which was decided, by a blind draw, just you know, spend a second introducing yourself for the crowd knows who we're, who we're hearing from, and then go ahead and go on into your answer. All right, uh, by blind draw, we're gonna start with Mayor Noonan. And our first question is, when you look back on 2014, uh, give us several of the most significant accomplishments that were made by you and your governing body. Well, we thank the chamber for this opportunity. Uh, actually, very succinctly, survival. <laughs> That's our biggest accomplishment. Because when you're a 198-year-old tiny little city on the rim of Detroit, and we all know what that meant, it was important that with 34% drop in land values and revenue over the last five years, and cities and villages and townships in Michigan having experienced a fiscal crisis unlike any since the Great Depression, the fact that we are still providing services is a miracle. Uh, the second item, oh, and by the way, that's due to excellent department heads, fiscal restraint, a lot of discipline and creativity, and everyone doing double duty in one form or another. The second one is having a very persistent developer come by for three years straight and say, I'd like to spend eight to ten million dollars in your community on Main Street. How would you like that? And of course I said, get out your checkbook, <laughs> draw up your plans, and we'll make it happen. And we will. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Taylor, same question. Uh, thank you very much. I want to thank the Chamber and Wayne Emke for, for having us for this event again. Uh, and I do want to start by recognizing uh, some of my colleagues who are here on council. We heard from, uh, from Wayne earlier. We have uh, the new Mayor Pro Tem, Doug Skinars, uh, the newly appointed council member, uh, Nate Shannon, who was actually appointed last night. And uh, welcome to... Uh, public service, Nate, we had a three-hour meeting with 55 residents complaining about smart meters, and that was after the residents were complaining about him being appointed. So <laughs> it's, it's a thankless job sometime, and so we're happy to have Nate on board. Uh, we also have with us uh, Councilman Joe Romano and Councilman uh, Barb Zarco. Uh, I'd be remiss, too, if I didn't uh, mention again, uh, I'm sitting here uh, with a heavy heart because I came to this event the last five years uh, to watch my good friend Mayor Nadi up here. Um, and the way that he could uh, go from, uh, a, you know, he might have been coming from a, a room full of blue-collared United Auto Workers, and he'd have them in stitches, and then he'd come into this hall where it's all business uh, leaders and members of the business community and he'd be able to transition from one to the other uh, so well. It, it was a testament to how well he connected with people. Uh, I'll talk more about that later but but that's that leadership is going to be missed. Um, on that, I am proud though, uh, one of the accomplishments we had is that uh, one of the biggest challenges we had was losing Mayor Nadi. And uh, I think he would be proud of the way that the city transitioned in a lot of communities um, it, it would not be as seamless as it was. And that's a testament to the leadership and the foundation that he helped build uh, over the last 25 and 30 years. Um, and, and we're proud, I'm proud to, to continue that tradition of working together with the city and working with the administration, working with the co uh, my colleagues on council. So uh, I'm really proud of the way that that happened. Um, if you've been to these events in the last few years, you'd hear Mayor Nadi say something similar to what Mayor Noonan said, was that our biggest accomplishment every year was, we made it. <laughs> we made it through. And what I'm excited about now is that in 2014, we really started looking at not just surviving, but thriving. Not just maintaining what we have, but improving on what we have. Getting back some of those nice-to-have services, uh, the quality of life services. And, and the way we, we don't know, you can't know where you're going unless you have people that tell you 
where they want to go. Uh, so we, we undertook a visioning process in 2014, which I would say was a great accomplishment for the city. We brought in stakeholders from all around the community, uh, high school students, business owners, uh, city administrators, city employees, residents, and we asked, what do you want the city to look like in five years, 10 years, 25 years? And we got that feedback from them, and we were able to start laying the foundation to really start improving the nice to have quality of life services. Um, so I, I'm, I'm excited to talk more about those, and, I, and I'm excited to, about the direction that the city's going in the next, next year and in the future. Thank you. Supervisor Stathakis, why won't you highlight a couple of the accomplishments in your community for us? Uh, yes, I will, but is this on? Yeah. Well, wow, these are good quality stuff you have here, John. <laughs> um, I just want to introduce my colleagues real quickly at this table here. We've got Stan Grot, our clerk, Michael Flynn, our treasurer, Trustee uh, Vire, Trustee Wozniak, uh, our attorney, Mr. Rob Huth. And also we have our brand new uh, police chief, um, uh, Bob, Fl um, I, I, I always have to uh, shillade. Bob Chalet, and uh, sitting next to him is uh, Jim, uh, Jim Swinkowski, and Carol Thurber from Files O'Connor Associate. We have uh, Mr. Jerry Moffitt, Planning Commission, also Deputy Treasurer for the county, and Dave Miller, our DP DPW Director, and Brad Bates, my Deputy Supervisor. Thank you all for coming. And Glenn Wynn, our planner. Yeah, we can't leave him out either. And um, But anyway, I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce very much for putting this function on. They do a great job every year. And I want to thank, of course, uh, Henry Ford um, Health Systems for the uh, great sponsorship that they do every year as well. Okay, so the... Um, Looking back at 2014, the most significant accomplishment that we have, without a doubt, and I don't need to look at any notes for this, would be the reforming our pension. We went from defined benefit to defined contribution. And what that means is instead of you know paying out $2 million over the lifetime of a retired policeman or fireman, um, now what we're doing is kind of what the private sector is doing. We have a 401k type plan where they put in 5% and we put in 10%. We match them 10%. And obviously, the system was not working. It was, it would have bankrupt us if we had not uh, fixed it. But the reason we got it fixed is because number one and foremost, the uh, residents and taxpayers of Shelby Township were basically very solidly uh, behind us. But also, I want to say the uh, firemen and policemen, both departments, cooperated, and um, they really did a nice job. We coordinated this with the unions, and, and it's going to actually save our budget uh, millions of dollars over the next uh, 12 years. So we're happy to have that. And that, that was the most important part, the, the biggest accomplishment. But the second part was actually funding our $22.5 million um, deficit. And we funded that through borrowing money from our DPW. We bonded for about $9 million, but today I'm happy to say that now we will have uh, more stability in our budget process, and all new employees now coming into Shelby Township will be on a 401k type plan, and that's very important. Um, and we did this, the, the best news is we did it without raising taxes. And uh, the board of trustees, uh, my hat's off to them for taking a stand on this, and uh, again, the unions did a great job working with us. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Jones? Thank you. Good afternoon. It is certainly a pleasure to be here today. I would like to also thank the Chamber for this opportunity. I am the only person here that is not an elected official, but I represent, on behalf of the 28,000 children in our community, um, all three municipalities and three others um, that serves the 66 square miles of the Utica Community Schools. Um, I am very fortunate to have a fantastic governing body, and there are four members here uh, today representing uh, the Utica Community Schools, and they are elected officials as well. Our Board of Education President, Dr. Carol Clino, who has served a long time on the board and is a stabling force um, for us um, as, as a district. Also, our Vice President of the Board of Education, also a stabling force, is Mrs. Jean Clyda, our Vice President, um, as well as Mrs. Templeton, our Secretary. Um, all three of these members have served um, the last over 10 years, and actually in some cases 20. Um, they have been through the 
great times, the difficult times, and they have extraordinary leadership. And then our newest board member, uh, Dr. Mary Thomas, who is currently a parent in the district, and she just joined us, and we're delighted she's here. And also members of my administrative team. Um, in the second largest school district in the state of Michigan, um, it does take a team effort, and I am blessed to have an administrative team that works very really diligently on behalf of our students. Uh, many of you know we're the second largest district in the state of Michigan, but we are also the second largest public employer in Macomb County. Uh, our students um, come from various backgrounds. We have 42 countries represented, and in addition to speaking English, we have over 50 languages. Um, our successes are uh, a real sense of pride for the uh, students and our families um, and for all who are associated with the Utica Community Schools, and that is we have academic excellence that supports our college culture as well as strong fiscal management and accountability. And what do I mean by academic excellence? Uh, we are very um, blessed that the great work our teachers are doing, a 90% graduation rate that is 14 points higher than the state average. Um, our high schools have been recognized by Newsweek magazine. Our students, when they compete at an international, uh, uh, state, and um, national, and local level, they do quite well in areas like Skills USA, um, robotics. Um, in fact, I would argue Sterling Heights, Shelby Township, and all the other communities that we serve, we are the hotbed for robotics um, for the state of Michigan or in southeast uh, Michigan. And in fact, if you know about the Thunder Chickens, um, they were world champions, and we also so have a prevolution. We have elementary teams as well, and uh, Christman Elementary was world champions um, two years in a row. Uh, we also have at the kindergarten um, level, we implemented our personalized blended learning model, which also has gotten national recognition, but more importantly, based on the achievement data from these youngsters and how we've been able to uh, focus on their learning, particularly in the areas of reading and mathematics, these youngsters, drunk, uh, youngsters are on a college trajectory. Um, in terms of uh, strong fiscal management and accountability, uh, we're very proud of this record because we have been not only fiscally responsible, we have provided transparency and responsible stewardship of our taxpayers' dollars. Um, last year, we received a, an A-plus audit from Plant Moran. Our Board of Education has committed to a CAFR, a comprehensive annual financial reporting process, and this allows for more details um, to be shared, and we are very proud of that work. And additionally, we have secured Michigan best practices to help stabilize our funding. Again, all to the credit of the good work of the administrative team, our teachers, and the difficult decisions of our Board of Education. Thank you. Thank you. Our second question is going to start with Mayor Taylor, and that is to give us uh, an idea of some of the strategies you're using to maintain or maybe even expand services in this calendar year. Well, thanks. And this dovetails with what I was saying in the last response, which is that uh, you really can't, um, you know, we're just seven members of the city council. And in order for us to know what our community wants, we have to get out there and ask the community uh, what they want. And we heard loud and clear from them. Uh, last year that they want uh, that the community wants a strong police strong fire and our roads fixed um, so we when I look at the services the city offers I kind of put them into into two piles we have the core level services like the police and fire and trash pickup and we do have our our trash contractor here with us and they do a great job those are the services that the the community expect no matter what in good times or in bad if you have revenues high or low. You better have the police out there. You better be responding to fire runs. You better have my trash picked up on time. Um, and so we've been, a, we've been doing a good job of maintaining that. And I'm excited to say that, you know, for the last couple of years, whenever we would have retirements in, in the police department, we, you know, we wouldn't be back filling them. We even had to lay off police officers and firefighters. I'm excited to say that in the next month or so, we're going to have six new firefighters sworn in, or six new police officers sworn in in Sterling Heights. And then every five or six months after that, for the next couple of years, we're going to have new police officers coming in. We're going to have new firefighters coming in. We've got more road funding now uh, because of uh, a past millage in the city of Sterling Heights last year. So we're going to have crews out there improving our city's roads. So we have strategies to implement uh, those, those core level services that we need to, to focus on. But we also need to focus on, like I was saying, the quality of life services. We need to enhance 
uh, the nice to have services so that we, we have a real sense of pride in the community and we have uh, events for the community and for the members of the community to, to go to. And, and uh, I'm excited about uh, a new program we're implementing this year. We, we've always had music in the park, which is a Thursdays in the summer. We, uh, we have a concert series highlighting local artists that come out to, to Dodge Park. And Dodge Park really is a jewel, one of the premier parks in Macomb County and, and one of the premier green spaces all around. Uh, and so we're going to start focusing on the assets we have there. We're going to uh, introduce a farmer's market this year in conjunction with our uh, music in the park. Uh, we're hoping to have some food trucks come out there, give something for the community to come out to every week, something that they can look forward to. Uh, we have, we're, we're expanding uh, our, our bike and uh, hike trails that we have throughout the city of Sterling Heights. This is really exciting too. Uh, there's, a, there's a bike and hike trail that's going from Belle Isle all the way up to, I believe it's Ironwood in the, in the Upper Peninsula. And it's going to snake throughout the entire state of Michigan. And we're happy to have a portion of that going through the city of Sterling Heights. So we're looking to get some grant funding to expand that and to really emphasize uh, that, that Members of the community have something to do every day uh, in Sterling Heights because that's what we want to focus on. That's what we want. We want to let residents know. We want to let business owners know that your employees have something to do and they have a lot of, uh, is, that, is that my alarm? <laughs> I, I heard crickets there, so it's, <laughs> I hope you didn't push that on purpose. So we, we just want to focus on uh, implementing those things that we heard from our residents during that visioning process, that this is what they want out of a community, and we're excited to be able to give that to them. Supervisor Stathakis, same question, some 2015 strategies. Well, as you know, and I think we've talked about this before, every year we get together, and when I say we, I'm talking about um, our board of trustees would be one group, our um, department heads would be the second group, and then finally our residents and taxpayers get together as a third group, and they tell us, each group actually says, this is what we think the top priorities for the community should be. Then we have our financial um, consultant who actually um, gathers the numbers and actually defines our top 10 priorities. Priorities. And the number one priority for Shelby Township in 2015 is actually our um, community center. And when I say community center, what I mean by that is we have four entities in that building. It would be our 41A court uh, building, and you know all about that. That's been actually uh, a priority actually for about 15 years in Shelby Township. But also we have a library there, Shelby Township TV, and um, a senior center. So what we want to do is we want to do some heavy-duty renovation and expansion. But before we do anything, we have to know about the 41A court. Are they going to stay or are they going to move? And as you know, it, it took about two and a half years for Macomb Township to come to the same conclusion we did, and that is we just can't afford a new building. It went to Sterling Heights, and they looked at it real seriously, and they can't um, or don't have the capability at this time to host a court either. And then finally, uh, Mayor Noonan took a look at it, and she had that same conclusion. So the good news is it's back to Shelby Township, and I guess it never left. But what we want to do now, now that we know we're going to host a court, what we're going to do is uh, we're looking at the whole building and we are going to renovate the court building. We are going to re renovate and expand the library and uh, hopefully we can uh, fit the senior center and uh, cable TV in that same building. And if we can't, we'll obviously look for um, other locations or do what we need to do. But the good news here is we're not going to increase taxes in doing any of this. What we actually are working on now, and it's more specifically um, trustee Vire and, and also Mr. Uh, Flynn, our treasurer, we have some parcels of land in Shelby Township that we're probably going to sell. And not only will that net proceeds of more than a half million dollars, but it'll be some tax revenue coming in for many years thereafter. And there's another half million dollars that the court has, which we're going to use in this renovation uh, process. And then in addition to that, we have money in our capital improvement fund that we may have to tap. So we do have alternative ways of getting this revenue that we need to fund this is a very, very important project. And I'm really happy, though, that you know um, our department heads and board are looking at this in a very creative way. And it's just another example of finding creative solutions um, together with our employees so that we can better serve our taxpayers. Thank you. Dr. Johns? Thank you. Our strategy really is to provide a portfolio of choices um, to our families. And what I mean by the portfolio of choices is that our students are able to pursue, pursue multiple pathways um, in our district. We want to be able to develop our students' talents and their interest. 
So as we move forward, we're going to continue to expand our, for the early learners our Great Start Readiness Program, continue the implementation of our blended learning model in our full day kindergarten program, and leverage that technology across all 36 schools in the district. We also will expand our elementary reading program. This year we did a K-2 implementation, I'm sorry, a 3-6 implementation, and then we will um, next year go with our kindergarten through second grade. And again, this fits in also with raising academic performance in the district. Um, we also will maintain our specialty programs. As I said, we have a portfolio of cho uh, choices. Um, our Center for Science and Industry, our Mass Science Center, um, our International Baccalaureate Program, and by the way, it is the best in the state, um, as noted by Washington Post, uh, our Montessori and Chinese immersion uh, program. Additionally, our four comprehensive high schools, Eisenhower, Stevenson, Utica High, and Henry Ford II, they will remain competitive by offering their broad um, number of course offerings. For example, focusing on the academics as well as athletics, but our strong advanced placement program, our strong career and technical education programs, everything from the automotive and health fields uh, to our um, academy uh, for those interested in public service. Also, early college and dual enrollment. And then as we move, and our fine and performing arts. As we move forward into um, this year, we also are offering a um, new tool for our students to assist them in planning for their future. That tool is called Naviance. Our students will be able to look at their careers that may be of interest, have their strengths assessed, and figure out um, what area of study may be interested in them. So they'll be able to plan the courses they want to take in high school and beyond, whether it's a um, trade school or the community college. Um, or a four-year um, university. And one of my favorite parts about this is also helps them have a course of study for the SAT or the ACT, and then um, to help our families so that for scholarship opportunities. And I would just put a fine um, point on this by saying, parents often ask me, Dr. Johns, what is the best um, pathway for my child? Is it the specialty programs or the comprehensive high school? And I always, always say to them, the one thing great about Utica Community Schools is that because of our size, we're not too big and we're not too small, we're just about right, that with the courses that we offer, students can choose to pursue their interests. So whatever your child needs, um, you may have a student that pursues the advanced placement route and takes some um, dual enrollment. You may have another student that wants to focus on a career and they focus, ha focus heavily on our CTE program and then matriculate on over to the community college. It really is what's in the best interest of your child. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Noonan, same question, some 2015 strategies. I'm having so much fun listening, I'm losing track of what I wanted to say. <laughs> I could just say ditto, but that won't work, right? Disciplined budgeting is the biggest uh, tool that we're using right now. We have, through attrition, lost police officers, we have retirements that have occurred in every department, DPW, police, fire, everywhere. And as a result, we've saved a lot of money. However, I have cops that work too many 12-hour shifts. I have a treasurer, Mr. Paternoster, sitting over there who's done the work of two people for four years. The clerk has done double duty for two years. We have an attorney. Oh. That's right, he's the new guy. He took over for his dad, but then I'm sure about a month later he wondered, what the hell did I get myself into? <laughs> Being the city attorney for a little city means you're a jack of all trades, kind of like my job. See, I know what, what it's like, Jim. But the bottom line is we have to do it better, we have to do it cheaper because we are so little, and yet we are expected to be a full service city like all the rest of um, my colleagues and the townships. The good news is that we're hiring. We're hiring back police officers, DPW, fire, and just had a, de a deputy clerk and deputy treasurer join our staff. You can only go on so long working people to death and before Beth and Phil retired uh, because I'm killing them, they decided, uh, yes, we do need to have more people. But the bottom line is, visioning is a way of life in Utica. Back in 1992, we did our first very large design charrette and vis visioning process. Essentially, it goes on all the time. It's renewable. If you're not looking at where you're going, 
and understanding where you've been, you're not doing your job. So in Utica, every day we're evaluating how we provide those services. If we cannot anticipate, communicate, and facilitate, then we're not doing our job. And that's what we try to do for all of our employees, for those vendors with whom we deal, like Waste Management, sitting right here, one of our biggest and best partners in Pat Grevy. Our communities, Shelby and Sterling Heights, both of whom partner with us in one way or another. We know that we will continue to be a thriving, wonderful little city. To wit, the Macomb County Planning and Economic Development uh, Department are our partners as planners, and we are doing a complete master land use plan revision this coming year. It's about an 18-month process. So nobody in Utica is standing still. We might move a little more tentatively because we don't have much money, but we definitely know where we're going. Thank you. Uh, third question, we're going to start with you, Supervisor, and that is, we mostly have a room of business owners here, so read the tea leaves for us a little bit. Tell us what signs you see that 2015 may, may be a little better and uh, a little more optimistic than 2014 was. Well, actually, um, one thing we are really committed to is roads in Shelby Township. We've spent about $36 million on roads. When I say we, a lot of that's federal money, about 25 or $26 million of that is federal money. But we've actually had matching funds for the other $10 million with um, the county. And Macomb County has been a great partner. Um, but, you know, it's funny, all that money we've spent, we, it's not enough. And we're going to continue finding ways to subsidize our road system in Shelby Township. I hear a lot that we have one of the best road systems systems in our county. But again, you know, if you want business, good business, you got to have good roads. And the other thing is we've initiated many years ago a long-term sidewalk uh, maintenance program, not only to reduce risk uh, and hazards for our, our citizens, but to increase the walkability for our citizens as well. I think on a 1 to 10 scale, we rate about a 7 in terms of walkability, and that's not really good enough. We want to be higher than that. So we've made some inroads on that. But as far as uh, partnering with uh, the private sector, we've done a lot of that. We've built uh, relationships with Macomb County Planning and Economic Development through what is called prime properties. And actually, Mark Hackle and Gene Diagostini, who's our developer in Shelby Township, kicked that initiative off a couple years ago, and it's doing really well. We brought in about 20 or 200 jobs in Shelby Township, and I think we're going to probably bring in another 100 jobs in a manufacturing segment in Shelby Township uh, in 2015. So that's working out well. And also, the Economic Development Advisory Committee, uh, kicked off by Paula Filer, um, is a wonderful um, uh, entity as well as uh, because it's actually promoting our real estate and development in Shelby Township in the commercial uh, market. And it's uh, something that was started about four or five months ago and is actually doing well. And of course, we're working with business leaders, our DDA, which is a downtown development. Uh, we have a corridor which we have to develop. We're making progress, not going fast enough, but uh, the walkability on 24 mile, um, I think is going to be better for, um, for everybody. Uh, we're actually making some plans, or they are, um, and we'll We'll see how that works out. So the infrastructure, I think, um, roads are, are good and uh, going to become better. And uh, partnering with the lower tax structure and uh, a guarantee of no increased taxes, I think, says a lot about Shelby Township. And we're really proud of that. Actually, when you look at all the townships and cities in the tri-county area, I don't know of anyone who has a lower tax structure than Shelby Township. And we want to keep it that way. And everything that I'm talking about here, we've done without raising taxes um, even a nickel. So. That's our pledge, and that's what we're going to uh, uh, that we're going to follow. That, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Johns. Thank you. I'm very optimistic about 2015. Um, as I visit schools and drive around the school district, one of the things that we notice is that the housing market um, is showing positive signs, which means that families are going to be moving into our community, which means they are going to send their children, more than likely, um, to the public schools. So I'm very optimistic um, that home sales and property values are showing an uptick, as well as um, there, there's a reduction in unemployment, 
across the um, district in the area. And anytime you have a recovering economy, um, that is actually good news um, for everyone. That doesn't mean we're out of the woods yet. It just means that things are looking better. And also the optimism that um, our young people who are graduating from high school and um, even new teachers who are graduating are thinking about that there are future opportunities for them um, as they move forward. As we look into the future, um, I know that uh, many of you are aware that the Michigan Citizens for Better Roads and Schools proposal um, is going to be put before the um, voters in May, and I remain optimistic that uh, with the governor signing um, Senate Bill 423 into law, it requires a, an adequacy study on school funding. Many of you um, in the audience know that in 1994, Proposal A um, went into effect, and um, it's been a long time since we looked at um, the school funding, so at least I think this study will inform where we are and what the future direction may be. Be, but I think the economy is looking good and things are um, promising um, and hopeful for the future. Thank you. Mayor Noonan? Well, we um, think that to improve the business climate, we just have to be Utica. After all, we have the best school system in the state named after us. And <laughs> Good job. <laughs> we are quick to remind people of that, of course, all the time. But we are walkable. We have an inviting downtown. We have a wonderful process for welcoming new businesses. The quality of life, the events and all the things that go on in the city, the highest quality services around, a brand new website, dashboard, um, credit card payments, good old plastic. Yes, we finally joined the 21st century. Uh, oh no, it was the 20th we were supposed to join first. <laughs> We are redoing, uh, as I mentioned, our master land use plan, and as such, our entire zoning ordinance will be reviewed. We are um, putting on the web, uh, already we have many things, assessing tax records and so on. So we know that the internet is a really important um, tool and a vehicle to let people know about us. So our new website, thanks to Beth Ricketts and her hard work, is up and running and doing well. Our hike and bike trail, um, hopefully uh, will be built this year up to River Bends Park. Again, partnering with Shelby Township and the feds, they coughed up $2 million, that does help. Um, we lobbied Senators Stabenow and Levin, and we will continue to work with the governor's office, with all of the state agencies and Macomb County to um, help the business climate because make Macomb your home is what we've chosen to do and we think it was a great choice. Thank you. Mayor Taylor. Thank you. Uh, we see a lot of signs that 2015 is going to be even better than uh, 2014 in Sterling Heights. If you look at any of the indicators, uh, population growth, unemployment, uh, investment, they, they're all trending in the right direction. Uh, we had a we had a presentation by our city manager at our council meeting last night that said back in 2009 I think our unemployment was around 14 to 15 percent. Uh, this year we're underneath the state average at about five percent. So that's something that we're really proud of. Uh, we're, we're really happy about. It's a sign that things are things are getting better every year. Um, Sterling Heights is, is one of the communities in Macomb County that continues to grow. Uh, right now we're the fourth largest city in the state. Uh, projections are that within two or three years we'll overtake Warren and become the third largest city in the state. So uh, Sterling Heights is, is almost fully developed in terms of residential, but people are still moving in and people are still finding finding areas to, to build new houses. We have developers uh, building subdivisions in every corner of the city right now. We have something like 200 uh, new residential houses under construction right now. So, um, and, and if you if you're looking to move into Sterling Heights, I, I've I've been looking. I, just I keep an eye on real estate in Sterling Heights. The good houses, they're up for a day and then they're gone. And so we're really excited about that. We see that there's a lot of enthusiasm about moving into Sterling Heights and uh, and, and, and we, we think we know why. And it's, it's like I said, we, we're trying to provide people with the highest quality of life possible. Really innovative thinking in terms of getting uh, residents to stay here who, who are here and getting residents to move in from, from out of state or from, from other areas. Um, when we talk about partnering with the business community, we have a very strong economic development team. We recently hired uh, a guy named Luke Bonner, who I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Luke was 
uh, with the city before and then he left. He's back now with a new consulting firm. We're his anchor uh, client and he's going to be partnering with m many members of the business community uh, to get development going. We have a lot of commercial development going. We, we were, the, we were the, uh, the epicenter for, for the biggest downturn. I think when I, when I got on council, there was a stat that said, Sterling Heights has the largest, median, largest decline in median household income of any city in the country. It's not something to be proud of. But that's the same, the same city where a Chrysler's Sterling Heights assembly plant was slated to be closed, and we worked with the business community, we worked with the state and, and uh, federal legislators, and now not only did that plant stay open, there was a billion dollars in investment in that plant, a billion with a B. I mean, this is one of the biggest, Sterling Heights has been the center for some of the biggest commercial development in the entire state of Michigan over the last five years. And we see that continuing now. And, uh, and so we're excited about it. We think that 2015 can, can be uh, every bit as good as 2014 was and even better. Thank you. Our final question, we're going to start with you, Dr. Johns, and it's just your chance to tell this audience what's ahead, what's the future of your organization, what's the most exciting thing you want us to know about as we leave today. Thank you. I just want to uh, thank um, Mayor Noonan and um, just, she is absolutely correct. Um, making Macomb your home is really a great um, place, that this is a great place to live and to raise a family. And we talk about the health of the community, whether it's Sterling Heights, um, it's the city of Utica or Shelby Township or the other municipalities we serve. People choose to live in this community um, because of quality schools. And quality schools then allow business to thrive. And it, is, it isn't um, by accident that Money Magazine identified um, um, sometime uh, recently, actually, uh, the city of Sterling Heights, Shelby Township, and Macomb Townships as one of the best, that these communities are the best small cities um, in America. And one of the reasons is because of the safety and quality schools. So it's just really um, you know, an honor to be here and recognize that we, we are really working hard to do good things. As we move into the future, um, what can we expect? Um, you know, there's, there's this um, persistent challenge we have and opportunity. And the fact is, is as we move forward, we're going to continue to wrestle with um, revenues and expenditures, because re expenditures continue to outpace um, the revenues. And while we have made budget reductions, we have consolidated services by leveraging um, supports from the Macomb Intermediate School District in the areas of technology or in the areas of um, uh, student truancy. The fact of the matter is, is that um, there's not many more services to consolidate. Additionally, um, we have been very um, diligent in employee concessions and getting health care and other um, structural um, elements under control. Um, but as we move forward, we're still going to have to address those um, persistent areas because we want to have, if we're going to have a high quality community and high quality schools, you have to have it, you have to continue to retain a talented workforce. And one of the things that um, we have done quite well, much like the city of Utica is, is that we have truly fantastic teachers and fantastic administrators, but we have been asking them to do more and more and more. And what I often share with the Board of Education, when we're talking about the number three chair or the number two chair, there isn't really anyone sitting in those chairs for the, the notion of succession. So we will have to recruit outside, well, how do you continue to attract and retain talent so we continue the great tradition of academic excellence in this school district? As we move forward, um, we're relentless in our pursuit of academic excellence. Um, we're going to continue to ensure that our graduates are graduating um, from high school, that they are prepared to not only go to college, but be successful. We um, expect our students, we're going to focus on um, digital citizenship and helping our students as they leverage that technology. Um, we're going to continue our mission of being accountable and fiscally responsible to the taxpayers of this community. But I also need to remind the community, unlike the townships and the other municipal municipalities, um, we are um, reliant on the state for funding. 80% of our funding comes from the state. 
um, and therefore um, we're depending upon them. As all of you know, um, another 10% of our budget um, comes from a non-homestead millage, um, and then we get um, some about 4% from federal funding and then the remaining from other um, sources. I do want to say um, very um, humbly to the business community as well as the taxpayers of this community um, as it relates to the non-homestead millage, we are very thankful um, for your support because you assisted us in stabilizing um, our budget um, for our students, and um, that is much appreciated. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mayor Noonan. Well, as many of you over the years have heard me um, whine and cry about the broken fiscal model in Michigan that funds local government. It's broken. It has to be fixed. Like the roads, like the infrastructure, the state of Michigan, legislature, executive branch, everybody has to work to make things better. On the local level, we do that. We negotiated four new contracts, all of which limited the legacy costs, definitely kept wages stable, and gave something to our employees so that they would stay with us. We are very, very well supported by our residents and our businesses. I have an extremely supportive council. I have department heads that work overtime trying to figure out how to provide these services in a well done, extremely professional, and yet cost effective manner. We have great neighbors. Nobody could ask for better communities than Sterling Heights and Shelby Township and a school system beyond compare. The residents in Utica are our biggest and most wonderful resource. They love being Utica. Joe Romano asked me, why don't we dissolve and become part of uh, Shelby or Sterling Heights? My answer to him was and always will be, when the people of Utica come to me and ask to do that or succeeding governments, we'll look at it. After all, we the people, they are the government. They've delegated the leadership to us when you look at what we have, we are walkable, lovable, easy to deal with, and I have a wonderful mayor, of course, and <laughs> we strive to excel just like Macomb County does. We want to move forward. We have the Clinton River, one of the five biggest rivers in Michigan, a wonderful natural resource. We know that you succeed by always evaluating, by learning wisely, and those three bywords I mentioned, Anticipate, communicate, and facilitate. Get moving, stay moving. You don't succeed without effort. No problem is without a solution, and the future is ours to make. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Taylor? Well, thank you again. A couple things I want people to know about that, that are going to be happening in Sterling Heights, a uh, couple housekeeping type things. One is that we're getting a new website, and we should have that on board sometime soon, and hope it'll be a portal to our city and, and give you a much better um, a much better glance at what the city has to offer, uh, not just for, for residents, but also for the business community. Uh, one uh, sort of disru disruptive thing that's going to be happening, you might have heard, uh, Van Dyke is going to be reconstructed. And if you've seen them out there, they're out there pulling the light poles out already. And I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. It's going to suck. But <laughs> it's going to be better. We're, the, we're, this is a $40 million project, and it's going to be a complete reconstruction of Van Dyke. And it's going, Van Dyke is going to be... Uh, you know, well positioned for the next 25 or 30 years to serve the businesses up and down and the residents that, that use that road every day. Um, we, when we talk about what we want to do to attract new businesses and to attract new residents, there are surveys that, that business owners will, will, point, will, will take to say, what is it that you want? What are you looking for in a community? And yeah, they're looking for low taxes. And I'm proud to say that Sterling Heights has one of the lowest tax rates of any city in the state of Michigan, lowest among our comparables, and lower than 80% of other cities in the state of Michigan. But businesses are also looking for a sense of community, a sense of uh, somewhere where their, their employees will be proud of, so somewhere their employees can live. I, I know a lot of friends. I know some people who are, are younger, younger folks, and they're moving down to Detroit. They're, they're moving back into the city of Detroit, and they're, they're not 
moving to the city of Detroit because they get great services down there. <laughs> they're not moving to the city of Detroit because their taxes are low. They're not moving to the city of Detroit because it's safe. They're not moving to the city of Detroit because if they call 911, a police or a fire truck will be there in a couple of minutes. They're moving to the city of Detroit because they feel a real sense of pride and a real sense of community down there. And those sorts of, th that pride is something that residents employees and businesses are looking for. And so in the city of Sterling Heights in 2015, that's what we're focusing on. Providing residents with those opportunities and with those quality of life services that they can say we're proud to be from Sterling Heights. If you look at our calendar, we have, we have events every week and every month. We've got the cultural exchange coming up. We've got uh, the more Memorial Day parade. We've got the music in the park like I talked about with food trucks and with the farmer's market that'll be running all summer long. We've got Teen Fest, we've got Sterling Fest in the city of Sterling Heights. Uh, we've got Senior Expos, we've got uh, Christmas, uh, Sterling Christmas. So we're looking in Sterling Heights to provide residents with something to do every day. We know we have to pick up your trash. We know we have to keep your city and streets safe. We know your neighborhoods have to be, uh, we have to get code enforcement out there to take care of, of, of blight. We know all of those things, but we want to do more than that. And that's what we're looking to do in Sterling Heights, and we're focusing on that in 2015. So uh, I want to thank the Chamber for, for giving me this opportunity, and we look forward to seeing you all again in this up upcoming year. Thank you. Supervisor? Well, one thing in Shelby Township I think we're trying to do, and I hope we've done a decent job, and that is just keeping it simple. I mean, really and truly, local government does one thing. It, it, gives good service to the people who pay the taxes. And we want to make sure we give you the biggest bang we can on the buck. And, and we've got to tell you, our employees have just done a marvelous job in a lot, since I've been here anyway, as our department has, and we have worked well together as a board. And what we have done is found new ways to make things happen. I think Dr. Johns used the phrase, do more with less, and that's exactly what we've done. Just as an example, Parks and Recreation, they once had 28 employees, and now they have 23. And if first question you'd probably be asking is, well, what services were cut? Well, the surprise is they didn't cut any services. They actually have more, and they're better. And I can go up and down. Uh, I could talk about our planning de department um, doing more with one less employee. Now they're down to two. Um, but we, and our HR has taken, believe it or not, it used to take something like 260 days to hire an employee in Shelby Township. I think you could build a Walgreens faster than that. <laughs> in fact, I know you could. Um, but now we're doing it in less in 100 days and we're trying to get it down to 50. Those are just some of the processes that we're trying to continuously improve. And I believe um, the employees are doing a great job. They're really the ones that touch all of you and they're the ones that we support. And we call it the right side up township because everything really depends on supporting the uh, uh, them. And also I, I wrote down a few notes because we've had so much going on in Shelby Township. Usually when you think of Shelby, you think of the residential neighborhoods, you know, like uh, housing permits. And by the way, we are definitely up uh, with 329 single family home permits. But you know, the bigger story in Shelby Township in 2015 is what's going on industrial wise. Uh, Javis USA is completing construction of a 90,000 square foot retail building on Shelby Parkway. And this is actually going to bring 75 new jobs to Shelby Township. Pazlon Company is going to bring 200 new jobs to Shelby Township in 2000. 2015. In Fourier Automation, over three years, they're going to spend about $9 million and they're going to be bringing about 50 new jobs to Shelby. And actually, that's just the beginning of it. We've got uh, some other companies that are looking at Shelby Township now. In fact, we just talked to uh, one of them last week and they could be bringing in another 100 jobs. So we got a lot going on, but you know, the best thing we have going in Shelby Township are the employees, obviously the taxpayers and residents is always number one, but uh, the employees just doing their best to meeting and exceeding um, uh, what it is that we're there for, and that is to provide service for, for everybody. And I'm really proud of, of our board of trustees working well together, and I'm looking at a great 2015. And um, by the way, I just want to say I can't thank enough my neighbors, uh, Jacqueline and um, actually uh, Michael too. Uh, I know when we had the oil drilling uh, fiasco going on, and still is, I called them first, and they were behind me 100%, and I want to say thank you your great neighbors, as is Rochester Hills. And also, I want to thank Dr. Johns, runs a great ship, and we're depending on you to keep uh, the good effort because we have to have the best schools in Michigan, and we do, and uh, thank you very much. And thank you all. I appreciate you being here, and thank you to the Chamber for running the, uh, a great event like you do every year. Thank you.
I want to thank all of our speakers for your time and all the good information that you shared with us, gave us a lot to think about the rest of the day. Thank you.